the physical education 6200 with the description of team sports and today we will be discussing about the official hand signals and at the end of the module the student is expected to identify the different hand signals in game basketball and understand the uses of the different hand signals of the official in basketball but before I give you the official hand signals, let us know first the duties and responsibilities of the referees in game basketball. An official in basketball is a person responsible for any spotting rule violations and enforcing the appropriate penalties in basketball. Officials are vitally important to any basketball game as they help to ensure a level playing field that prevents either team from having an unfair advantage. The referee's main job on the basketball court is to administer fouls and calls whenever the rules are not followed. They must do so to the best of their abilities at all times without any subjective judgment. The referees must stop it all in the game and make sure the game is always played as fairly as possible. Officials need to remain focused and properly positioned throughout the game, as even the smallest mental ups can represent the difference making the right or wrong call. And that is the duties and responsibilities of the referees in game basketball. So the official ensure the progress of the game and every violation or any interruption of the game, fouls committed, whatever types of foul it is, it should be implemented. First in the pre-game, in the in-game, and also the post-game, it is the responsible of the officials to follow all the rules and regulation of the set game. So here is the official's hand signals or the mechanics of the referee. First, we have the classification of game clock signals. Stop the clock. The official raises his hand up with an open palm to indicate the running time clock must be stopped. In any violation or any interruption of the game, the official raises his hand up with an open palm, signaling that the clock must be stopped. Second, stop the clock for foul. In case of a foul, the official raises one clenched fist to stop the time for attending to a foul. So once a player committed any kind of foul or any types of foul, even a technical foul, the referee must stop the clock for foul using his clenched fist. And that is the difference between the stop clock and the stop the clock for power. And the last one for the game signals, we have start the golf clock. The beginning of the game is signaled by the chop of a hand of the official. So the referee must start the clock by chop of a hand. In the beginning of the game, the official administer the jump ball. And once the player taps the ball, it is the duty of the referee to signal to start the clock. And also another situation here is that once there is a player in bounding the ball, the referee makes sure that he is going to start the clock, signaling the timekeeper that the ball is alive and the time is alive. So that's it for the game clock signals. Next we have the scoring. We all know in basketball that we have one point, two points, and three points. So in one point, the official holds up one finger and a flag motion of the wrist is executed to signal that one point has been obtained or attempted. Next is two points. The official holds up two fingers with an added flag motion on the wrist to signal that two points have been obtained or attempted. In any kind of shot, Dunk shot, layup shot, jump shot, any types of shooting, 
the conversion in basketball is only two points unless you are tried to attempt on the three point shot area. And this one, the official holds up three finger on one arm to signal an attempt at a three point shot while holding up three fingers on both arms means that the shot has been successful. And there are two referees. The lead referee is the referee position himself under the basket or under the goal. While the trail referee is the referee position himself behind or beyond the rainbow territory or the three point shot area. So this is a responsible by the trail referee to raise his one hand if there is an attempt in the three point shot. And immediately, if the basket is counted or has been success successful, immediately the referee will raise his both hands. So another one is the interruption of the game, which is the substitution. This is characterized by the four arms forming an X in front of the chest of the official. The team may choose to substitute a player provided that the ball becomes dead and the game clock is stopped or the ball becomes then following a successful or only free throw. So the referee will use the stop clock followed by forming an X in front of the chest, signaling to the table official that there is a substitution. So the coach uh, will uh, suggest or uh, command their players to report on the table. And the table official will mark who will be the player to be substituted. So it's about time for the player to in if the official signals a beckoning in. The official beckons the substitute player to enter the court to officially let him her enter the game with an open palm waving towards the body. In other words, this is the only time that the player must enter inside the court as a displacement player. Another interruption of the game is the charge timeout. The timeout is charged against the team whose coach requested for it was first unless it is granted to a field goal scored by the opponents. The official forms a team with his arms with an open palm touching the finger of the index finger. And then the referee will use the stop block and signaling the timeout. So the timeout is given to the coach who requested first. And also after a violation, after a foul or any interruption of the game, the coach has the privilege to call for a timeout. Another kind of timeout is the media timeout. Media timeout is determined by the organizing body of the competition who has the right to choose whether or not to apply this. For each period, only one media timeout is allowed. The first time out in each period shall run for 60, 75, 90, or 100 seconds. Teams are allowed two time outs in the first half and three time outs for the second half. It is done with an open arm stretch sideways with clenched fists. So the only difference here now is that in charge time out, there is a T signaling that there is a timeout requested by a coach. But in media timeout, open arms or stretching sideways of the, ref the referee is or must be visible. So what is all about media timeout? It is a by the requesting of the organizing body that there is a mandated timeout, especially if it is a commercial league and the uh, basketball game is televised, there is a sponsor, and sometimes there is a media or a press interviewing the player or the coach and other officials of the game. 
that media timeout is being charged. Another classification in the hand signals is the informative. It is the duty of the referee to inform the official stable, the players, and the whole bench what happened during the game. The first one is cancel score and cancel play. Procedures like motion using the arms and once across the chest, the score is not declared counted or the play is canceled. Here is the scenario. If the player is in the act of shooting and he was fouled by a player and, the, and, uh, and there is a conversion of basket, but if in the discretion of the referee, there is no act in the act of shooting, the referee will immediately cancel the score and signaling that the foul had been committed on the floor. So in any violation, the play must be canceled once there is a score delivered or the score has been successful. So another informative is communication. This signal is characterized by raising one thumb up. This is a communication between the two referees, the communication of the referee to the table official and also to the player. One situation here, if the player is inbounding a ball after a violation or after the foul, the referee must signal with his thumb up to his partner, meaning to say that the ball is alive and the time is alive. So it is about the referee to give the ball to the inbounder. Another informative is the shot clock reset. The index finger is raised above the head, moving in circles to indicate that the shot clock has been reset, often because of a foul or violation or for any valid reason. We all know that there is a 24 second shot clock that will be given to the team that has possession of the ball. And it is a signal by the referee if the ball is inverted if the ball hit the rim or in any violation or after the violation or any valid vision that the shot lock reset is needed. Another informative is direction of play and or out of bounds. While pointing the direction of the play with two fingers and with an arm parallel to the sidelines, the official signals where the player must go or if the player is getting out of bounds. Direction of play is where the player or the team has control of the ball going to the front court. And out of bounds is the area where the player will inbound the ball. So this is the time that the referee will pointing on the direction of play using his two fingers. Another informative is held ball and jump ball situation. The official holds up two thumbs and then point to the direction of play using the alternating possession arrow. A jump ball decide whose team is in possession of the ball and start the first period. In the beginning of the game, the referee administered the jump ball. So after the jump ball, while there is a rally or the game is in play, if in the situation or any situation of the game there is a held ball or a jump ball situation, this time the referee will not administer a jump ball. But of course, he will stop the clock and raising his two thumbs up. And the third is direction of play. And why direction of play? Because there is no jump ball administered by the referee. It is the alternating possession instead. And by using of the alternating possession arrow, which is in the table official. 
So the referee will immediately decide whose team will inbound or has the possession of the ball. This time for the violations. Traveling. By rotating the fist, the official may signal the traveling violation. Traveling is the illegal movement of one foot or both feet beyond the limits outlined while holding a light bulb on the court. But first, what is traveling? When you are running, jogging, or walking with a ball without dribbling, it will be considered or it will be called as a traveling violation. If you take three or more steps in layup or any kind of shot, it will be called for a traveling violation. So remember this, that once you establish your position, make sure you know where, who, where is your free foot and where is your pivot foot. The pivot foot is in contact of the floor while your free foot can move in any direction while you are holding the ball. And once you commit traveling, the referee will raise his stop clock, followed by rotating the face, signaling the traveling violation. Another violation is illegal dribble and double dribbling or double dribbling. The official makes light patting motion with his hair pump to indicate double dribbling violation. When the player starts and ends his dribble and starts to dribble it again, it is considered a double dribble and considered a violation. So we all know that in the dribbling as basic fundamental skills in basketball, we are dribbling with our finger pads and not with our palm, but with the help of the wrist action. And if the player dribbled the ball and stop and dribble it again, it is considered a double dribble. And it also, oh, you are not allowed to dribble with both hands. And that is also a double dribble. And another kind of illegal dribble is carrying the ball. For another term for that is lifting the ball or palming the ball. Because you are using your palm and not your finger in dribbling the ball, the official makes a half rotation motion of his palm to indicate that a player has not dribbled the ball in his her possession. So another violation is three seconds. With an extended arm held out and a show of three fingers, the official signals a violation of the three second rule. This states that a player shall not remain in the opponent's restricted area for more than three seconds while his team is in possession of the ball. So the restricted area is from the free throw lane going to the end line under the basket or under the goal. So if your team has the possession of the ball and you have holding the ball or even any players who has the possession of the ball, you are not allowed to stay more than three seconds in the restricted area, but you can stay it within three seconds. And once the referee caught you, that you are staying in the three seconds area, the referee will call for this violation. They stop the clock, the visible count, followed by pointing his fingers with three or three fingers to the restricted area and he called for a three seconds violation. Another violation is five seconds. The official holds the five fingers, signals the rule for the closely guarded player in charge of the ball to pass, shoot and dribble within given five seconds. In other words, if you're dribbling the ball and you stop, and one player or one defensive player has a do or harass you or giving a tightly guard or closely guarded, you are only given two options to pass the ball or to shoot the ball. And if not, you are you will be called for five seconds violation. Another rule for five seconds violation 
if the player fails to inbound the ball after a foul, after a violation or any interruption of the game, the referee will call for another five seconds violation. And also in the free throw lane, the shooter or the shooting player will only given five seconds to shoot the ball or else there is a five seconds violation and the referee will stop the clock and signaling five seconds. Another violation is eight seconds. By raising eight fingers up, the official signals the player in the back where who gets the ball into play to get the ball to the front court within eight seconds. So this is a part of the player who's inbounding the ball and the receiver. Once there's a player inbounding the ball and you receive the ball, while you are dribbling, you have to pass the midline or the center's area or center line to the front court. But once you are dribbling the ball or holding the ball, more than eight seconds, the referee will call you a violation of this kind. So this is in the back court, not in the front court. You need to say, if you are holding a light ball, you are only given eight seconds to pass on the center line. And another violation is 24 seconds. The violation of the 24 second rule is signaled by the official finger touching shoulder. This rule applies when the player gains control of the ball in the playing court, their team must consequently attempt to shoot for a field goal within 24 seconds. So automatically, the referee will stop the clock and touching his shoulder, signaling that there is a 24 seconds violation. If your team has the possession of the ball, you are only given 24 seconds to execute, to shoot or even to hit the ring for about 24 seconds, but not more than 24 seconds. And if this happens, the violation will be committed. Ball return to backcourt. This violation happens on the backcourt to the front court. So the official with two fingers held out wave his arm in front of his body, and this states that team in control of the ball in their front court may not cause the ball to be illegally returned to their back court. So once the player involved the ball and received that, the player with the live ball dribbling in the, or going to the front court, and he is not allowed to bring back the ball to the back court and he will be called for ball return to backcourt or a backing violation. So another violation is deliberate football. Another term for this is kicking the ball. The official points to the foot he puts out to indicate to the violation of the deliberate football. So kicking the ball is sometimes intentionally or even unintentionally. But any part of this leg, your knee, your thigh, is not part of the violation for kicking the ball. Sometimes it is palming the ball or palm ball, rather. So deliberate full ball by using your toes or any other part of your feet. So the referee will stop the clock and slightly kick but not on the level of her hips or waistline because it is a basketball and not any kinds of sports that using a kick like Taekwondo. So this time for a types of foul. So the referee here signaling a clenched fist and not an open palm, signaling that there is a foul committed by the defensive player or even by the offensive player. The first is holding with a hand grasping the other arm downward. The official is indicating that the player committed the holding foul. It is the illegal personal contact of a player with his her opponent interfering with the freedom to move or the player is impeding the progress of moving. 
that's why the player is holding or will be called for a holding power. And this time the referee will raise his arms with a clenched fist and hold his arms in the chest level. So the other arm is straight with a clenched fist and then holding with the other arm. Another type of foul is blocking for the defense and illegal screen for the offense. The official places both of his hands and hips if players committed either of the aforementioned foul. The screening is illegal if the player did not recognize the time and distance of the opponent in motion when contact occurred. So the referee will raise his hands with a clenched fist and place his both hands in her or his hips. Now, what is blocking defense? We all know that the proper way in defense stance is for the cylinder principle. So you have to raise your arms vertically and you have to make a lateral movement or side to side. So there is a player, as a defensive player, you are not allowed to approach to the player to move forward so that once the player in progress of the dribbling and you are going to black his way, you will be called for a black and foul. So what is illegal screening? The time and distance of the opponent's motion when contact occurred. In this scenario, it is illegal screen once the player is moving or once the defensive player and the offensive player holding the floor is moving and you made an screening that will be an illegal screen. Pushing or charging without the ball. When you heard the word charging, we all know that this is an offensive foul. But this is without the ball. The official holds both hands out with palms pointing forward, imitating a push motion. Charging is another legal person called the executed by pushing on the opponent's torso. So here is in our body, you know. Well, this pushing is executed by the referee, meaning that there is a foul without the ball. Or sometimes a defensive player just push the offensive player. And another type of foul is hand checking executed by the official by grasping the wrist of the other hand and holding a palm forward. This is just a signal hand check. It is an illegal form of defense in basketball wherein the player who is in defense uses his hands and arms to prevent the opponent from making forward movement. This is not like an holding foul or pushing foul, but you are just placing your hands. For example, if you are a defensive player, you are now to place your hands behind his back uh, that will remain for a few seconds. So you will be called for a hand checking. Another type of foul is illegal use of hands. To form this signal, the official holds his cross clenched fist downward. Illegal use of hand is when the hands of the player extend outside the cylinder principle. So you are going to swat away of the hands of the other player, just like in rebound B. Player A and player B battle for rebound, and player A committed the ball by swatting away the hands of the player. So that is one example of illegal use of hands. Another type of foul is charging with the ball or the offensive foul. This time with a clenched fist against an open foul. Foul of charging is committed by the player. Obviously, this is a foul committed by the team who has possession of the ball or the player who is controlling a live ball. So the referee will immediately raise his hand with a clenched fist, followed by an open palm at the chest level and the other arm will do the punch on the palm. And that is the charging with the ball. Illegal contact to the hand. Upon illegal contact to the hand, the official strikes the palm towards the forearm sideways. 
feeling that you are contacting on the arms of the player. Excessive swinging of elbow. This rush action may become a cause of injury and official signal its excessiveness by swinging his elbow backwards. This is a very dangerous part that you are going to commit. Sometimes there is a second motion after a foul or any uh, violation, there is a second motion by the player by swinging his elbow or her elbow. And this you will be called not only for a personal foul, but sometimes the referee will call you for a technical foul, even a sportsman-like foul, and disqualifying foul because you are using your elbow that may cause for any player to have an injury. Another types of foul, it is hit to the head. The official imitates the contact to the head in this hand signal. Sometimes in a pass break situation, if the player is rushing to defend the passes player you know, or who received the ball, instead of hitting the ball to block, sometimes they are going to hit the head or unintentionally, or even it is inten uh, intentionally. Types of foul, again, we have the foul by team in control of the ball. If the team who has the ball committed a foul, the official holds out a clenched fist and points it toward the basket of the offending team. It is part of what we call charging with a foul or offensive foul. After the referee call with a charging foul or offensive foul, it is followed by foul by a team in control of the ball or whose team committed for the offensive foul. Another type of foul is foul on the act of shooting. The official raises an arm with a clenched fist followed by pointing upwards with an indication of the number of the feet throws. The foul is equal to so the referee will clench, uh, will be having his clench fist and then followed by pointing to the basket. If it is one point for two points or even three points. Following the arc of shooting, once the player penetrate or drive to the basket, and if he is fouled in the act of shooting, and it is the discretion of the referee that is in the act of shooting, so the referee will immediately point in the basket. But if the foul not on the act of shooting, the official raises an arm with a clenched fist followed by a point to the floor, meaning that the foul happened before take the shot. This time for the special fouls, we have the double foul. The official waves both of his clench fists above his head. This is called when two opponents commit personal fouls against each other at around the same time. This has happened between the offensive player and the defensive player. So the referee will raise his both hands and waving his hands, signaling that there is a double foul committed by a player especially if there are two players battling for the possession of the ball. This is an optimal situation and they commit the foul at the same time. So in this double foul, the alternating possession arrow is in effect. Another special foul is technical foul. Any non-compliance with a set of the rules of the game is considered a technical foul. The official forms a team with his hands with one palm hovering above the other hand in a vertical position. So the referee will clench fist and signaling the technical foul. Anybody will be called for the technical foul. The player inside the game, the bench, the coach, will be called for technical foul if they failed to follow the rules of the game. A player will be called for a technical foul once they delay the game, once they uh, 
pull the ring or even grab the ring or pull the net. net. Another is disrespecting, showing any body language, disrespecting the officials or the officials table. And the coach will also be called for a technical foul. And also the bench, which is charged to the coach because the coach is the manager of this bench. So a lot of rules inside and outside of the game in the bench will be called for a technical foul. And it is also technical foul if the player is having an argument or conversation with the audience that will lead for the any delayed or any infractions of the rule. So another special foul is a sportsman-like foul. The school judge judges what this fair contact foul may be. They must come in the form of excessive or hard contact of the player in an effort to get the ball. Free throws will be awarded to the player who was fouled in this situation. Two for a player not in the act of shooting at the time of the foul and an additional one for the player in the act of shooting. The official does his hand signal by grasping the wrist above the head. So this is like a holding foul. The only difference that in a sportsman-like foul, the referee will hold his hands above the head, while in holding ball, it is in the chest or shoulder level. So what is the penalty given? If the player is not in the act of shooting, there is a two free throws plus ball possession. If the player is in the act of shooting and the basket is converted or was converted, there is a one free throw, a bone shot, and of course, there is a ball possession. And the last special pause is disqualifying foul. The official holds up both of his clenched fists in the event of a disqualifying foul. And this foul is characterized as any flagrant and sportsmanlike action by a player or team bench personnel. Disqualifying foul is the foul given or is the foul whistled by the official by raising his both hands with a clenched piece of closed fist. And this time the player is out of the way. He, can, he or she can no longer stay on the bench and he will leave the competition control area. And that's it for the officials hand signals. We have the game clock signals, the scoring, the informative, the violation, the types of foul, the substitution and timeout, and the special fouls. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.